bitch. Cheers, mother. Cheers, mother. Now, we've had quite the day, personally. <laughs> it's been crazy. Things are happening. Things are happening. We, uh, can we say? Or is it jinx again? Mm. I'm worried mine might be jinx again. I'm also, I haven't got mine. It's, it's not official. No, I mean? no one signed anything. No one signed anything. Big personal day for both of us. Big news that we're not sharing. It's like when you know influencers yeah. are like, <laughs> guys, I've got some really exciting news for you. I can't just share can't yet. share it yet. Can't share can't, yet, guys. Guys, we're can't actually doing yet. a brand deal. Uh, we're bringing out a collection with Pretty Little Thing. <laughs> I reckon this is going to be an iconic one. I'm calling it now. Wow. <laughs> I'm already crying. You're already <laughs> crying. It's a big day. Oh, I'm really excited about my life. Yeah, me too. Come and we, um, um, the day we're recording this, we posted our first video episode yeah. on the old YouTube. I'm not guaranteeing that all of the episodes will be there. Something will be there. Fourth wing is up. You can watch that. Anything and else it's really watch? funny. Really great physical comedy. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the Horny Book Club. Hello. I'm Ellen. And I'm Alice. And this week we're talking about Wild Love by Elsie Silver. <laughs> sure. Full disclosure, we've already had like a full half an hour conversation about this. We just couldn't stop, you Normally, guys. Normally, we, we don't. We're strict. We, we are strict and we refuse to talk to each other about the books that we're reading because it's like you don't want to. I mean, it's sad in a way because we're like, no, that's content. <laughs> Don't waste the content. But um, we couldn't help ourselves and we had a full half an hour conversation. And unfortunately, it was really funny. But like that just gives you a taster of that we like could not not speak about this book. We couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. Could not, would not want to wait. No. But before we begin. What's a burp? Yeah, that's what I meant. Before we begin. <laughs> Everyone get your burps out <laughs> get now. Get your burps Go out on. now because they're going to be on camera. <laughs> Don't forget that you can follow us on Instagram at the H Book Club. Is that right? I think so. You can follow us on Instagram. Maybe the handle's going to change. Who <laughs> knows? It's the H Book Club currently. It might be the HBC podcast if you're listening to this in the future. Wow! Spanish! <laughs> you can now subscribe to our YouTube channel. Woo! Woo! Baby! You can email us, hornybookclub at gmail.com. Send us your thoughts, your feelings. Your feedback, only if it's positive. Book recommendations. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, whatever. Um, anywhere you get your podcast, follow us. Leave us a five star review. Leave us a nice review. Don't go on Apple Podcasts and rate us one star. Don't. Whoever the f- it was. Yeah, whoever it might have been. I wonder. Yeah, don't rate us one star. Don't be a prick. Not one star. Like I'm like, it's not one. It's star not podcast. one star. I could understand if you were like, it's a three star podcast yeah. for me. Like objectively, I don't care what they're talking about, but the sound quality is great. <laughs> but it's not a one star podcast, is it? Star don't. Podcast. Don't be a prick. Only the episodes that have been deleted were one star. The the subtitle will be... We have a Kofi. You can leave us money on it if you want. Yeah, especially if you like the videos. Like, if you are interested in YouTube videos. Mm. They are a lot of work. Listen, guys, I don't want to have to start a Patreon if you like them. <laughs> but I might. Don't make me start a Patreon. Don't make me start a Patreon. Because I will. Okay. Guess where we are, mother We're back in Canada. <laughs> if there's one thing about me, it's I love being in Canada. I love being in Canada. And you know what else I like? Is a map at the beginning of a romance oh my- book. You guys, I'm not being serious. I mean, I am being serious. I'm not being, I'm not being serious at all. I am, in fact, being serious. <laughs> What the fuck is this map? It's pathetic. Why did I need that? Why did I need... All you had to tell me, Elsie, all you had to tell me was that Rose Hill was between, basically, Vancouver and Chestnut Springs. The Elsie Silver universe. It's like, it's... It's not. She's like, British Columbia. And I was like, no, you didn't make that up. You guys, it's not an Elsie Silver universe. It's Canada. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? so funny. I was like, you can't be like... You guys, I've created this universe... (laughs) You've not. It's f***ing Canada. <laughs> yeah, I know. Being like, I've created a fake town in Canada that's very much based on a real town where I, li- I Elsie Silver, live in real life Canada. The ESU. The ESU. The ESU. So today we're talking about the latest instalment in the ESU, in the <laughs> Elsie Silver universe. We are talking about Wild Love, the first book in the Rose Hill series. Initial impressions, thoughts. What did you rate it? 3.5 stars. 
Mm. What did you rate it? Three stars. Devastating. She's she's <clears throat> done me dirty. Old Elsie has done me dirty. If you've listened to our episodes about Chestnut Springs, you will know that we were big into Chestnut Springs in like a big, like really aggressive way. Like really just like... But this, for some reason, it just didn't hit. It didn't quite hit. Mm. And I mean, I think it's partially because obviously it's the first book. There's a lot of exposition. There's a lot of like setup. We're meeting all the characters, every character for all the next, I have to assume, four books. Mm. Uh, we've met them all. So that's good. I'm really happy about that. I just was like... I really needed that. I, could, I couldn't I could believe that it was so like... And I go into the shop and I meet the protagonist from book three. Like, it's it was so like... Really badly, yeah. It was not... Like, something I loved about the Chestnut Spring series was that in Flawless, I couldn't have been like, oh yeah, winter's going to be a... Is gonna, there's going to be a book about winter. Maybe if you had known, been aware of Elsie Silver's game, known what she was capable of. Yeah, that's true. Like when you read enough romance books, you're like, oh, well, she's mentioned so so, so there'll be a book about them because otherwise you don't mention them. It's but like, it didn't feel like as forced. Like we always we always do this comparison of uh, Liz, Liz Tom Ford to Elsie mm-hmm. Silver. But like in the Windy City series, in Mile High, Mile High, in Mile High, Mile High, it was quite obvious that there was going to be a book about at least Ryan from the first one. Mm. But I didn't feel like, and this is my brother Ryan, and he will be the protagonist of book two. This is my brother Ryan, and he has this problem, this problem, this problem, and this problem. Yeah. He's looking for a wife with this quality, yeah. this quality, this quality, and this quality, which is basically what we got in yeah. this. And you're just like, like, it actually felt like Ryan was important to the story, and you were meeting Ryan as part of uh, the story of Mile High. Where in this, I would say, oh, no, even Western, with every character that we now know is going to be, um, there will be a story about. It was very much as you just did. Thank you. This is Bash, <laughs> and he's grumpy. So you can assume he'll be with a sunshine girly when his book comes out. The thing about Bash is he's got problems because he helps people in fires. Don't we all? <laughs> Famously, no. But... Famously, the opposite. <laughs> I help people in ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do a plot rundown. Okay. That's how we'll get into this. And then okay. we can say whatever we want. Okay. Wild Love by Elsie Silver. Book one in the Rose Hill series. In Wild Love, we are following Ford Grant Jr. First of all. Ford Grant. <laughs> just two words. Ford Grant. That's not a name. It's just like two noises. Ford Grant. Grant. We were both annotating our own copies. And mu- multiple times, I've just been like, stupid name. Stupid, stupid name. name. Hey, that name. Hey, that name. Um, and what's her name? Rosalie. And and what's the name of the town Beaumont. they live in? Rose Hill. Yeah. And what's her name? Rosalie. And what's the name of the town they live in? Rose Hill. So it's called Rose Hill and her name's fucking Rose. And I was just like, could we just... Why didn't I clock that once? He calls her Rosie. And I was like, in the town, called Rose. Rose. I was like, can we not do this? Why didn't... That did not even enter my brain. Why did they call her that? Oh, that is dumb. Oh, f***. It's a three stars, not 3.5. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so we're following Ford Grant Jr. He is Willa from Chestnut Springs, Heartless. Willa Grant's uh, brother. He brother? is a billionaire. When she references her brother who owns the bar that she works at. And at yeah. one point he rings her and he's like, come back to the bar. And she's like, no, and then, that's him. And then in Hopeless, Bo and Bailey's date is in Ford's bar. Oh yeah, And Ford's that. like, friends of Willa, hey? And you're like, why is he here? <laughs> oh, she's going to write a book about him. Um, yeah, he's like, hey, you guys. Oh, she's quite young, isn't she? You're going to fuck in the bar? No worries, guys. <laughs> Off I go. He's like, I'll see you later for my book. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Can't wait to see you guys later. <laughs> it's me, Will's brother. It was like a porn star. That's literally what happened. Really. <laughs> That's so true. So yeah, he's a billionaire um, for various Just, reasons. Just like inexplicably, they're like, and he's a billionaire, by the way. She was like, and he is a billionaire. The first line of the book is, you've been voted Forbes's... Sexiest billionaire. World's hottest billionaire or whatever. Yeah. America's hottest billionaire. And I was just like, oh. And he has been a city boy for a long time. And he's like, ugh. Oh. God, city life's just not for me anymore. I'm going to move back to Rose Hill where my family summered because they were yeah, rich. rich. And I'm going to start a record label and it's going to be so like rustic and like yeah. and it's going to be a retreat for artists who like need to get away from the city because I understand that because I need to get away from the city. Yeah. He's bought this barn and this house, farmhouse. He's renovating no. it to set up his studios, Rose Hill Studios. Yep. Original. And what's her name? <laughs> <laughs> 
Her name is Rosie. <laughs> her name is not Hill, though. Thank, thank God. So then Rosie, our female protagonist, she is the sister of Ford's best friend. So we've got a bit of... Uh, West. West. So we've got a bit of brother's best friend shit going on. And she has been fired from her job in the big city also because she was sexually harassed, basically. And before she could complain, she kind of stood up to her boss. And before she could put in a formal complaint, he fired her devastating mm. so she also goes back to rose hill to her where her family are from for a break from city life everyone just hates oh, the, city. the city life and she's like i've been trying to convince myself that i was a city gal but i'm not i'm not i'm a country gal um she's also in a relationship that's just fizzled it's fizzling so she's got a, she's got to break up with ryan and he's called well. ryan i was like Whoa. she's got to break up with ryan at some point as well um yeah ford gives her a job yeah he gives her a job but she, because she's like you should give me a job and he's like Ah, well, the thing is, I've been secretly in love with you for 15 years. Yeah, so it might I be a conflict of interest. But I will, sure. in fact, also do it. And simultaneously, whilst that is happening, why Ford needs the f***ing extra help is because, knock, 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 who's at the door? <laughs> <laughs> it's young Cora, who is uh, Ford's biological child, because when he was 19, he donated sperm because his rich dad wouldn't give him money to see Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. So he donated st- sperm for $100 so we could get a concert ticket. Perfectly normal explanation as to why you would have a biological child. Yeah. I would argue. So Cora turns up and she's like, listen, my dad's dead. Yeah. My mum is mm. my mum is uh, clinically depressed. Yeah. You are my biological dad and you're a billionaire. Please help. And he's like, well, can't really say no, can I? Except when they she first gets there, he's really inexplicably so rude to he's her. He's so rude and to her. And he's like, I didn't like the devil or no, something. No, I know. I underlined that because I was like, you cannot Me say too. this to a child. She's, Me too. She's, Cora is 12 years old. She knocks on the door and she's like, you're my biological father. But he's like, uh, I don't think you are because I didn't fuck Morticia Adams. And I'm like, yeah. you can't say you that can't to a child, to a 12-year-old. That's so rude. Is like, this in chapter one he says this? Yeah, yeah. That's impossible. I never fucked Morticia Adams. Her head tilts and her eyes roll again. She barely reacts. She's cool. She's crazy. Really original Nepo baby. You never heard that joke before. What about a, about a paper Dixie cup? She continues. A Petri dish? A sterile tube? You f*** any of those for a few bucks at any point in your life? I feel every drop of blood sink down to my feet as my stomach turns and my head spins. Because yes, in fact, I did. So then he helps out Cora and becomes like a very much a father figure to her. And I'm just going to throw this one out there from off the bat, off at the start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say? I don't even know. I'm like... <laughs> that is my honest reaction. I'm like, okay. Um, the Rose Hill series is very obviously going to be about all of the single dads of the town. Yeah. She's doing a full single dad series. So clearly she's got to be like, right, well, they all can't have just like left their wives or had a one night stand or whatever it might be. We've got to keep things fresh and interesting. What are we going to do? Da, 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 da. Mm. I don't think... This sperm donor sperm baby. Sperm donor baby. And I'm like, she had to then make him a billionaire because actually, and this might be a slightly controversial thing to say, but actually the whole point of a sperm donor, of, of how he donated sperm as well, is that like, it's not it's it's not the same as like giving a, someone up for adoption. No. Do you know what I mean? Is that you don't have that responsibility. And actually, if he wasn't a billionaire, if he was a normal like working class man and Cora knocked on his door, like he would be so within his right to be like, I, you know, I can't help you. I'm you, just a sperm donor. Yeah, like we are maybe biologically related, but I have no, like, it, when you donate sperm, it's basically like you give up any right. Yeah, yeah. To, like you sign all the rights away. As they say in Legally Blonde. Exactly. Any claim to the child would mean that any masturbatory, mas- masturbatory ejaculation is reckless abandonment. That's what Elle Wood says. Slay. Slay. Uh, because he's a billionaire and because he's like, God, I see so much of myself in this girl. Um, and I was like, her personality, like, I don't really think that she would have basically his exact personality, which she does. I, well, no, I don't think she does. I think he, like, wishes he was as cool as her. But, like, he's always like, I can see that trait in him. I can see that trait. I can see that trait. And I'm like, so much of your personality is based on your environment. Yeah. When you grow up. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like, that's not what would happen. I just think it does not hit the same way. Like it I it's hit. a good it's a good way of having like, you know, there's been a child of yours walking around for twelve years that you didn't know about. Yeah. But it is not the same. It does not hit the same as for example when Theo Silver's like, You're telling me I've had a baby for two years or Yes. Whatever. It does not hit the same as that. 
Because I just kept being like, this only works because he's a billionaire. Imagine if he was like, uh, no, goodbye. And he was a, like, <laughs> he was a billionaire. You'd be like, what a <laughs> What a I hate the billionaire thing. Mm. I, yeah. I already knew that about myself, but this has just confirmed it for me. Well, I didn't because of, of Windy City. But they're not billionaires. No, but they're millionaires and they were rich and I kind of liked them. So I thought, well, maybe I will be into billionaires, but, but this I'm not. whole book is about money. Yeah. This whole book is about money. So like part of the thing is that um, Rosie is like, when I got sexually harassed at work, my dickhead boyfriend, Ryan, he's not even a dickhead, he's just a loser. Yeah. It was kind of like, oh, okay, sorry, babe. Like, maybe you shouldn't say anything because, like, don't lose your job, do you? And yeah, she was you, want, like, you will need to get ahead in your career. All I want is a man who'll stand up for me. Like, I don't need to be saved, but, like, sometimes I want to be. And that's the whole thing is that she's, like, my whole life, or as long as I've known Ford, he's been, like, standing up for me and helping me out and coming to get me from places and all this kind of stuff. And part of that is that because he's a billionaire, mm. he's just like, here's 100 grand. Mm. I'm helping you. Here's a place to live. I'm helping you. Here's a business you can work for. I'm helping you. I'm helping you out. I'm sorting your life up for you. I'm like claiming you as my own and feeling responsible for you mm. and all this shit. But I was like, it's weird to, uh, I mean, this is a predictable opinion from me. Whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I don't care. Like, it's weird to give someone a hundred grand and then the next day eat them out. So yes. sue me. Yeah, I said so it. fucking said sue it. me, okay? I like I hundred percent agree. It was what book was it where we were like Window shopping. Maybe no yeah, window shopping or fangirl down where it's like there's a lot of pressure. Their life is now built around the money that these men are giving them. Yes. And it's like then then you're kind of in the situation of like, what if you break up? What if you break up? The whole thing with Ford though is that he's Ford Graham. is that he's so like, listen. You can't work well if you're on your period and you're in pain. Therefore, you usually need to take a sick day. Go home. And it's so like, oh, King, we get it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. meant to the whole thing. She puts in all of these lines yeah. about like, you think I, you know, I'm, I can only think of this example now where he's like, you think I care about a bit of period sex, Rosie? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You think, and, and when I'm, she's I'm got like a I'm slight aggressive. bit of period pain, he's basically like, you know, if men had periods, they'd be off for the full week. Like he's so like, you're meant to be thinking like, oh my gosh, King, King. But then when he just like gives her 100k, the way that she does it is he's like, listen, your work is worth that. I'm not giving that because we're f I'm giving that because the work you are producing as my business manager for my record company that I can start on a whim because I'm a billionaire, your work is worth that. Yeah. And I'm like, any other f***ing startup record label would be like, here's like 50 quid quid for the year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so you're, ugh, there's so, there were so many bits in it where you're like, oh, you're meant to be like, King, go forward. But actually, I was, I was like, like, ew. The power dynamic. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> ew. And again, it's like a f***ing broken record. I understand, guys. Maybe we should just stop reading these books. But <laughs> no, we can't because how would we do the podcast? The, pa the power dynamic is there. Mm. Like, so he gives her this job. She's like, I'm going to do my very best work. And wear my pink blazer. And I was like, oh, God. Um, and but then they're sexting via email. A bore me later with the emails, by the way. I'm like, Casey, I was like, who? Yeah, I'm like Casey McKiston wanna be with these f***ing emails. Who do you, who do you think you are? They were boring. I kind of like them at points, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. They, kinda, it wasn't it was hitting like, for me. It was like, it was, it was like a me. fun little vibe, but I was like, because you're at work, you're doing this by your work email, address, and also like, and you've been just f***ing, f you've been fired because of sexual harassment, and now you're like, hey, hey, and then wanna wanna. <laughs> this desk later boss winky face <laughs> CEO, CEO of de dickhead companies and you're like and they're just sat across from each other and I was just like you guys could just talk there's no one else in this it's room just actually them emailing each other while they were in the same room was just giving me the air which is, is completely different from Alex and Henry in red white and royal blue emailing from the other side of the world yes being like signing off their names as p dead poets and shit yeah and being and like secret gays from the past from, here's a quote from Alexander Hamilton and they're like <laughs> business manager to the cock or whatever yeah, and I was yeah. just like what the f going on here yeah. yeah like signing them off was like still sore from yesterday winky face and you're like okay some bits of this i was like credit to her elsie silver is a funny mm. and b keeps you hooked like i flew through it i wanted to be reading it mm. and i was enjoying it like mm. she makes very easy to read very like digestible books and you kind of like even if you're like jesus christ you're like mm. i i i'm turning the page i do still want to know what's going to happen yeah so he gives her the job and then eventually they f 
And then she quits. There's like a scene where she's like, by the way, I quit. Slams the door, whatever. Fine. I was like, oh, good. So maybe she won't work for him. But then he just like at the end is like, be my business partner. And I was just kind of like, she, yeah, he signs over half the business to her. Oh, and I, I understand like lots of like married couples are business partners. I understand that. But maybe not like after a month. And then they get engaged straight away, obviously. Um, obviously. Sorry, sp- spoilers. They do get engaged straight away in the dark. Um, the engagement scene. We talk, I whatever. forgot about that. I was like, what are we doing here? What What is happening? For, m- for me, it did still kind of hit but it did not hit as hard. Like, I, I don't, I haven't even thought about it really mm-hmm. since I finished it. It's not memorable. Like I could to this day tell, do an, a detailed synopsis of everything that happened in all five Chestnut Spring books, <laughs> even Hopeless, which I was like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> just a small screen. <laughs> I did enjoy it. It was fun. I think Elsie Silver was really funny, but like, I just, I re- I, I didn't like him. No, you don't. I Well, maybe people do. When you said you thought I was going to like him, I was like, I'm offended. Not me liking the billionaire. <laughs> I No, no, I didn't think you'd like the billionaire. I think there was aspects of him, particularly in some of the build up, not the smut, that I thought you would be interested in. Oh, when you kept pulling her hair? Yes. <laughs> What can I say? I did not hate that. I'm going to have to find it. I remember what page number it was at. Oh. She's talking about being a people pleaser. She's terrified of disappointing the people I care about. But I know I'm done. I finally come to terms with it. But telling Ford before I tell Ryan would be shitty. As in she's got to break up with her boyfriend. Because Mm. they're having a, are you single? Yes, are you? I don't know. Oh. Because she knows she's going to break up with Ryan. But she hasn't yet. Oh. Okay, I'm actually excited for what's coming. <laughs> I've just been like, didn't hit. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, like, Telling Ford before I tell Ryan would be shitty. Where Ford and my personal life are concerned, vague is better, safer. He stands calmly, unfurling his powerful body. Yeah. I was, powerful? Like he's a, like he's a, a lion. <laughs> Unfur- <laughs> curling his powerful, like, golem, like. Unfurling his powerful body before stepping right in front of me and bending down to my level. His lips are a breath away, his eyes so deep and searching, I can't hold his gaze. Slowly, his hand comes up to grip my ponytail, just like he did the other night. But tonight, with one slow tug, he guides my head back, so I'm forced to look at him. Next time you ask me that, make sure you are. And I just wrote next to it, kinda slave. <laughs> Ooh, you know I liked it because I didn't even write anything, I just underlined it. That's how you She know. said no comment. She said no comment. <laughs> no notes. Famously, I hate anyone touching my hair. Mm, Famously, it can't mm, do with it. It's not for me. But I am, I can appreciate that. But the thing of pulling the hair back like that, that is only something that can work well, in my opinion, in a childhood friends to lovers. It's it's kind of so weirdly intimate. It's so kind of... You have to know the person to be able to do that. Mm. And again, I don't know if that's just me and being like, if anyone f***ing touches my hair, I'm like, it's hands. Mm. But like to me, that's such like a... Because it's slightly like playful it's slightly like you know like hair tugging like you tug because the hair of the girls that you like in school sort of because thing. she says when he does it one time before that and she's like oh when we were kids he always used to pull my hair mm. but then i'm also like firstly you weren't actually kids you were like teens teens and um he used to pull your hair because he fancied you on the page before that this is where they're sat by the fire why are you looking at me like that his gaze meets mine and this time he's the one who licks his lips i watched the motion before adding you should stop I know. Slay. There's so many bits which I do. I love in a friends to lovers trope of like when you know that there's a vibe. When you know, you know. Um, When there's like a vibe. And so they're always like, he's always swimming in the lake and she's on the pier. And then like he'll swim up to her and he'll kind of like be resting like next to her, like Mm. legs or something or like balancing on the pier very close to her. And it's like, she's very good at making those moments, especially in the first like, up until this point, up until there's kind of a definite, like, no, next time I ask you, you better be f-ing single, basically, so we can shag. But up until that point, there's a lot of, like, really small moments where you're, like, just touch. Like, you're not, you're not even, like, I want you to kiss. I'm, like, I just, you know, you just want, like, the brush of the mm. finger on the thigh as he's, like, leaning on the pier. Mm. 
I have do to you say, know what I mean? I do know what you mean, but I have to say I was I was really actually not feeling that, which is why it didn't hit. So this scene, amazing yeah. that we just discussed. But apart from that, I was like, I'm just not really feeling the tension because although both in their internal monologues, it's kind of like, yeah, I I've, I've, I fancy him. I've, well, she he's like, I've been in love with her since I was like 15. Mm. And I'm like, oh, okay. When she's like, I love you. And he's like, I've always loved you. And I was like, okay, don't one up her. <laughs> <laughs> if someone said that to it's me it's not a competition if someone said guy. that to me I would be really like oh so you love yeah, well, me more than I love uh, you is that what you're saying but to be fair the, both of the times that they first say I love you I love you to each other is kind of accidentally during sex at two different sex scenes I gasped and he's she, he's like I'm gonna f*** you like I love you or something and, he, and, like, and she's just like because she's bent over obviously <laughs> but she just kind of like looks over her shoulder and then they're like they're just like forget about that but then she's like and he does yeah yeah and he does and he does and he does does. i was like slay i was like oh i love that hated that entire entire scene (sighs) the smart in this one is crazy you guys the smart in this one is crazy Crazy. one good scene in my opinion and i can't remember which one it was the last one no it's the one the middle one i think the one where um when they're in his bed yeah isn't that the last one no do they fuck after that they call the but after that, <laughs> um, which I, you which I knew was coming because you texted me about it, but I was still like, oh, good God. I did not enjoy. And I hated it, partially because of all the paint. It was horrible, actually. That's that's one and of the worst Elsie. We said it before, we said it again. No shame to Elsie. She loves a And we don't. And that's fine. That's fine. And if you like a and you like fucking, then you will like this. Like I could say, it was well written. For a I don't remember. Good for you. <laughs> what I would say before we kind of jump into the smut, because if I'm honest, there's not a lot more plot to discuss. <laughs> what else happens? He joins a bowling league where you meet all the other single dads that the books are going to be about. So yeah, so Rosie's sister West, who's his best friend, he's a single dad. He's got two kids. Yeah. There's Bash, Sebastian. He's a rescue firefighter and also, also a, a contractor. But also, I've not heard anything about any kids. So I'm thinking maybe is he going to date a single mum? That's why I think he might date Tabitha, who's going to have her sister's kids. But isn't it a single dad's bowling league? Like, isn't that dad's? Yes, dad's club. Yes. Maybe he's got a dead kid. Oh, I didn't even think that. In a fire? That's why he does it. Listen, we've got to stop doing this because Elsie's not written it yet. She's, she's <laughs> going to steal our ideas. Well, I'm like, Elsie, have him. Elsie, take him. And as long can as you I write it well? Can I do a request? Can I do a request? If you're going to do a f- scene, do it the other way around. <gasps> Basically, yeah. There's like a lot of back and forth. She ends up breaking up with her stupid boyfriend. And part of the thing that I didn't like about Ford, and there are lots of things to not like about him, mm. I would argue, mm. um, is I hate, it's like, um, What's his name in the golf? Wells. Wells. Another stupid name. Yeah. The aggression, the aggressive possessiveness. I hate it. Yeah. I'm like, leave me alone. Yeah. And I know that in this one, especially, she's like, I want someone who's possessive of me because all I've done is date this guy who's just like Meh. a wet wipe. Yeah. But like, she's about to break up with her boyfriend, and they go for inexplicably they go for co- a beer. No, she's already broken up with Ryan. Oh, she's already broken up with him. But he, Her and Ryan have a very civil breakup. And so he's like, oh, I've driven nine hours. Can I just stay and I'll go home tomorrow? Yeah. And she's like, yeah. So then they're at the pub. And at the same time that Ryan, Ryan is there, Queen Willa shows up. Will my baby girl. Love her. Good to see you, my friend. Mm. Then so Willa and Ford go to a bar and Ryan and Rosie are there playing pool. And he's like such like a prick. Yeah, he's like, he's like horrible. So and bad. he's like... Uh, I know what you are. You're like someone who doesn't give a shit about their girlfriend who just like go to bat for their girlfriend or whatever. And I was just like, oh my God. Ryan's just there like, uh, <laughs> and then you? after that is, right after that is the first time they kiss. Like she you takes know. him outside. Yeah, I know. She takes him outside the bar to basically have a go at him. And then he's like, he just, he, he doesn't deserve you, babe. And I do. And like, blah, blah. And then they like make out. That for me is not it. That like losing your cool in public thing. Like actively being a prick. I, ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Gag, big gag. Big gag. We're on page 211. By the way, if you're going to read this, they do not fuck until like page 350. Yeah, well, they don't kiss until page 212, so. And it's a 400 page book. So you've had 212 pages of. A lot of stuff about Cora, don't forget. The only kind of saving grace. And Rosie and Cora's relationship. Cora and the 
record company. And I've and got, how, oh my gosh, I've got to go to Calgary or whatever. How he feels about his relationship with his dad, how he feels about his relationship with his mum, how she feels about her relationship with this person and this person and this person and this one. And I was like, when are they going mm. to f***? Because I know they're going to. I needed some earlier smut. Like, this yeah. is unusual for Elsie. Yeah. Normally well, the smut is said, coming earlier. Well, we said, this is, this to me kind of feels quite similar to Flawless. Yeah. Flawless, they don't f*** until page like 270. Yeah, that no, that's true. That's true. Because she's like, I've got to do the I've got to do the exposition, I've yeah. got to do the full world build of the Elsie Silver universe, aka Canada. My opinion of Flawless, first fifty pages, so <laughs> boring. So, <laughs> yeah. And actually I have to say I didn't really find I know that, because but... it you had already been in the world, you read Flawless second or third or whatever. Uh, fourth. Fourth. Oh yeah, you went backwards. I went four, three, two, one, five. Classic. So similarly, you have fifty pages of exposition yeah. where they're not even together, like geographically. Yeah, speak. They're somewhere in Canada, but not together. You got to have all the city stuff. She's got to get to Rose Hill. She's got to, you know, s- say hello to her brother. He's got to say hello to also to her brother. Uh, he's got to join a bowling <laughs> league. You know, Cora's got to show up and be like, uh, "Hey, you're my dad." Hello. And he's got to say weird stuff to his twelve-year-old biological daughter. We've yeah. got to have all of the stuff about Cora's mum, yeah. Cora's dad. He's paying for Cora's mum to go to, to a, a to a rehab, and like a sort of uh, it, they call it a rehab, yeah. but it's like she's severely depressed. Cora's got to be enrolled in school. He's got to buy her bed sheets. She doesn't like dark purple. They must be black. <sighs> Oh, bore me later. So, Here we go. Yeah. You know, so finally, we're at page 210. Finally. You've got some f-ing nerve. You know that. She's mad enough to give me a soft shove. One hand on so- each shoulder pushes me up against Not the- a soft shove. Mad enough for a soft shove. Ugh. So mad. One hand on each shoulder pushes me up against the pub's pale yellow vinyl siding. What is that? I'm like, first of all, What's a- that's not a pub. A pub with vinyl siding. What's vinyl siding? Uh, like, I imagine what, like, the side of a, like, stationary caravan is. <laughs> what? Like, vinyl, like, you know, like, like, lino floor, like, that kind of material. Oh, when not wall... like a gazebo. It's not important, I And guess. then, and then, careful, I'm still your boss. My guy. This is why I'm Brother. <laughs> brother. Uh... My brother in Christ, please do not. He already had a rough day. That was mean. I don't give a f*** about his day. My dick is definitely bigger. Oh, because she said a dick measuring contest. <laughs> Sorry, I did skip that line. <laughs> and, he goes, and my and my cock <laughs> is bigger. That's such an ick. That's mm. such an ick for me. Even if you like someone, even if you're in love with someone, them being like, my dick is bigger than his. You're just like, sure. Oh, I'll How be, old I'll are be you? the judge of that, won't I? Get your dick out then. You cut out. He doesn't deserve you. Excuse me. I repeat the sentence, even though we both know she heard it. I said he doesn't deserve you. Her cheeks flush and her eyes are wild. She is spitting mad. I f- love her like this. Behave. I ha- I hate that as well. When they're like, um, this I feel like this is quite a big thing on um horny male Instagram reels where they'll do like re- reaction audios, or whatever, or they're like the miming videos, whatever. Um, and it's always like when she shows her true personality, and you're like, oh, love you ready her. to. F- got a boner and i'm just like if i shout at sam he's like oh yeah tan's like please don't shout me <laughs> i've had a long a long day he's like, just show me some respect actually <laughs> yeah can you just uh, like please. weirdly weirdly my relationship is based on respect maybe i'm just better than everyone else i just don't think we can communicate properly if we're both raising our voices at this time yeah Do, would you like to go in the other room and then we'll come reconvene later and you're like yeah fine yeah adult men fine good whatever well, I like, guess we're in an adult relationship if I was f***ing someone <laughs> why did I say that <laughs> <laughs> my god if I was dating someone and I shouted at them and they were like I'm so horny I'd be like ooh red flag red this flag, is not red what flag. I'm here for actually because I'm here to be annoyed at you not to be like mm. angry equals horny yeah like I hate sorry I'm, I'm on it now I hate 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 that thing where yeah. it's like we can never be mad at each other because instead of getting angry we just get horny and i'm like no yeah when i feel like an injustice has been done yeah which is frequent i'm like i'm pissed off i'm not like Ooh, yeah well i'm like f- what i'm like because i think also they're probably the relationships that not relationships the arguments that we are having in our relationships never kind of correct me if i'm wrong not to speak for you <laughs> but they're not normally about topics that then can then turn into it's because i <laughs> love you yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah they're like, like they're like why didn't you rinse the shower yeah, yeah. i'm like i beg of you take the food bin out next time <laughs> do you know what i mean it's not like please <laughs> take the food bin out i'm asking you so politely to just <laughs> he's like he's like well i'm not doing it i was like <laughs> love you and i'm like did you ever think of that and then you 
<laughs> no, that's not what's happening. You're not having these relation these arguments that they're having of like, why are you behaving like that? You know, it's not those t- type of. No arguments. one deserves you because you're the queen. Yeah, and that it could like, turn into that passion. He's like, I'm not fuck. taking out the food bin yeah. because you're the queen. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh sure. Um, <laughs> I'd rather you just didn't think I was the queen and actually just took the food bin out. Maybe they're more, more do you know? If there wasn't a rotting food bin in my vicinity, maybe I'd be more horny. It's fine. He'll never listen to this. This it's is fun. a hilarious line. The tips of her shoes bump the toes of my boots. Her breasts pressing against my forearms. <laughs> Where is for- Oh, his arms are crossed. His arms are crossed. Oh, yeah. Where well, they're now crossed against my chest. But I'm go. still like, I don't want my breasts on someone's forearms. <laughs> She's like, and he's like, Rosie, shut up. Don't tell me what to do. Rosie, shut up because I'm going to kiss you right now unless you tell me not to. By the way, don't tell me to shut up. I hate that. Don't. I don't think. If someone was like, shut up. I I'm don't like, think. I've, oh. I don't think my lovely boyfriend or I have ever told each other to shut up whilst in a like a serious conversation. Yeah, joking around maybe, but yeah, but never when you're actually in an argument. Shut up! I can, you can, you can you imagine? Can you actually imagine? Really rude. Really rude. I love that she doesn't go all soft on me. <sighs> um, and for once, she doesn't say a f- word. And I'm like, and for once, that's so rude. What you missed was he says, "Shut up," because I'm going to kiss you right now unless you tell me not to. I've put, "Okay, go off, king of consent." <laughs> he still doesn't know they've broken up. Just to remind you all. When Ford tugs my hair back and takes my mouth, my knees go weak. He catches me. He holds me up. He presses his leg between mine. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Wraps, wraps his big, wraps his big, big palm <laughs> around my throat. The first time they've ever kissed. What is going on in these books with the choking? <sighs> like, oh my God. <laughs> you really put some weight by that. <laughs> you were really like. They've been kissing for one, one second. second. <laughs> He's put his thigh in between her legs and ch- choked her. I'm like, <laughs> you cannot begin a kiss. This is, I, again, this is Instagram. Instagram and TikTok are ruining every... <laughs> sorry. So glad. Ruining everything because it's like... <laughs> everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. Because again, it's like that thing where it's like, these guys on TikTok are like, and then I choke you and look at my hand i've got like a rose tattoo between my two fingers like mm, mm, mm. that you want to wear my hand as a necklace blah 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 and i'm like mm. no normal person chokes another person the first time they kiss them mm. nobody does that that's f-ing weird mm. Mm. at no point has anyone discussed whether or not they like no choking. choking yeah so they're just Crazy. like snogging basically she feels a silver chain around his neck and i'm like connell wannabe wanting to be connell when we um, but then when we discovered what that was i was like Again, she's been reading Red, White and Royal Blue. I was like, this is an ick? Yeah, I'm creepy. finding this an ick. And then he stops, obviously, because he still thinks that she has a boyfriend. And he's the king of concern. Except he did kiss her when she had a boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Ford, please don't stop. I should. You shouldn't. I have to. You know this isn't okay. Why? Why? Oh, my God. He doesn't know. <laughs> he, like, walks back into the pub and she's like, where are you going? He's like, to apologise to f- boy. He calls back over his shoulder. And I'm like, bro, she's dumped him already. You know this is fine. And I'm also like, he's not a boy. You're a boy because you just kissed someone you thought had a boyfriend. Legit. Why? I thought you weren't sorry. Let's call it my condolences then because any arsehole dumb enough to blow it with you when they've got you free and clear is having a bad Free and day. clear? She's not property. Are you going to come back after? That's the thing, Rosie. I've gone and made you my employee and I know you need this job. There is nothing free and clear about this. Then his fingers wrap against the vinyl. They were... They were... <laughs> He's like, there's nothing free and clear about this. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I think it's like a... It's just like, like a, a one, just like a... Yeah, like a... There's I'm nothing in. free and clear about this. Leaving me more confused about him than ever. Me too. Full stop, end of chapter. End I was like, ch- brilliant writing. <laughs> Leaving me more confused about him than ever. Full stop, end of chapter. Moving on. That kiss is sort of hot. Sort of hot and sort of not. Yeah. That I would say is the sort of theme yeah, for the, the rest of the book, smart. Yeah. But there are there are parts where I was like, mm, oh, one hundred percent, and then parts where I was like, no, he's putting a pen up. A you sh- guys, you guys, you guys. So the next, so after the kiss, yeah, he's that's like, a jump scare. By the way, he's like, you. I was like, when that chapter began, I was like, this isn't happening. This can't be going where I think this is going.
There have been times in my life where I have read things where I have been like, this shouldn't be hitting like it is, but it is hitting. Yeah, 100%. And Elsie thought she was doing it, but she, but she was not. Yeah. And then there's a bit later when um, like something else is happening and he like picks the pen up again and like puts it behind her ear. And she's like, hey, I thought that was my pen now. And then he puts it in his <gasps> mouth and goes, sure tastes like it. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, and I was like, Ugh. Yeah, and so then the next smutty scene... What page are we on? We're on page 300. So bear in mind, we've still not shagged. No, we've still not shagged. We're about to, though. Well, the build-up to this is that um, they have hired a contractor to do the work, uh, at the renovating the, the studio. His name is Scotty, and uh, he, he fancies Rosie and uh, Ford hates him. I think he's going to be one of the guys... <gasps> That's a good shout. At the end, Bash says, "Ah, uh, Scotty, yeah, he thinks with his dick." And I was like, "He's gonna, he's gonna get someone pregnant." Mm. Bent all weekend tortured over you. I was supposed to be having a great time, but all I could think about was you. I've been obsessed with you for years. Yeah, yeah. that's literally where I just am, and I don't even know if I fully realised it. I've heard about you through the grapevine, looked you up online. I've gone a decade without laying eyes on you, satisfied that you were doing what you wanted to be doing. But it never felt like this weekend did. Good. I hope you were miserable. I know I was. But I'm so like, when I know I'm reading that in a tone, guys, I don't pretend that I'm not. But it actually like, I've been obsessed with you for years. You're like, um, okay. I think that's really hard to take in. Like, again, I'm laying my book down again. I know it's this thing where it's like, it's it's extreme he falls first and like he's mm. and he's like the obsessive billionaire and like blah 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 and he holds a candle for and he's never held a candle for anyone else but i'm like in an actual situation where someone is like i have not laid eyes on you for a decade i've been obsessed with you you're the only person i've been, I've been looking fight, you up but online. i've been looking you up online don't you worry i'm like what i was just living my life thinking we were childhood frenemies mm. and actually you've just been in love with me and obsessed with me and i just think again the dynamic of the relationship is so weird because he's like uh, welcome to the relationship. I've been having this relationship with you for 10 years. I'm way more like, I'm way more in it, Rosie. Mm. I'm here. Mm. I've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Mm. Where the hell have you been, Loka? She says, you do hate me. That's our safe place. You have to hate me. It's easier that way. Oh, I, I hate definitely that, don't hate you, Rosie. Not even close, but I can f*** you like I do if that's what <laughs> you need. I have written, have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> have mercy. Do you need a formal invitation or something? And those are the words that have every obstacle <laughs> between us evaporating on the spot, King of Consent. I flip her around roughly and... I've put, and then what happens? How do you explain this to your parents and daughter? Quite literally. When my only, only, only thought was they have to then go back into the house where Cora and her grandparents that she's only just met having breakfast and they're all like, why are you completely why covered you can... in pain? And they're going to be like, look, look, he's going to have his arm around her and they're going to be like, <laughs> don't worry about it. And Cora's going to be like, oh, you've been her <laughs> off, have you? <laughs> <laughs> you've been in the paint <laughs> pretty much like, like oh from there the only kind of plot that then happens is they go to a they go to a gala they go to a ball where they do the sex in the weird position which <laughs> i don't think we actually have time for genuinely and i'm not sure we need it the only other thing about that scene before the miscom miscommunication yeah. is um they go into great detail of describing the dress that she's wearing yeah? oh and it's it's <laughs> I didn't necessarily think it was hideous. It wasn't my favourite thing I've ever read. But the whole point was like a, like a V-neck, long sleeve number, uh, tight sleeves up to the to the elbow, yeah, with like those tiny buttons. And I was like, okay, detail. I appreciate, <laughs> you know, buttons up the back or a zip up the back or something. But I specifically remember the buttons on the full wrist to elbow, yeah? And yeah. then a nice balloon sleeve, yeah. A-line dress, da, da, da. And then they have a fight about the fact that he has been doing something crazy mm. and uh, her old boss, uh, the guy who sexually harassed her, kind of assaulted her da, 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 and then got her fired. Ford has been buying buildings <laughs> that this office in downtown Vancouver that this company is based in, evicting them. And then they go to a different building. He buys the building. He does the same thing. He buys the next building. He does the same thing. So they bump into someone at this gala who used to work there. And she's like, oh my God, Rosie, have you heard that like yeah. this, our company's going bust? And because... she's like, but... In... And Ford is like, oh, crazy. But instead of having this conversation slash argument slash fight at the place that they are, 
They leave the building, get into the car, drive all the way back to the hotel, get out of the car, go into the hotel, go into the hotel room. And then she's like, right, tell me what's happening. I can't be with you if you're like doing all this money shit. Hold on, I've got to find it. And he's like, you're worth every penny. And I'm like, oh, it's not the point, my guy. This, this isn't a game. I'm in love with you. This is pocket change compared to what I'd be happy to spend on you. I've put, this is not hitting in the way she thinks it is. I've spent a lot of time wondering why the boys in my life never felt an inclination to stand up for me. And now I'm face to face with a man who's made it his mission to do it. Even in the throes of passionate argument, he makes me feel more secure than I've ever, I ever have before. It's overwhelming. It's heart rending. It's safety. And she's like, finally feel like we're a true team or whatever. And I was just like, you're f***ed, mate. This is just the crazy antics of a man with too much money. This is not when you're like, Him behaving I've never crazy. felt more safe in my life. I'm like, no, you should feel way less safe because yeah. he's clearly crazy yeah and it's like this is ca- chaos pocket change he's just crazy like you just can't do that i don't think that is a sign of like how much you care about someone especially if you're doing it without you knowing her knowing yeah because you're not doing it as like that she really wants to get revenge you're doing it as some like weird little vendetta against this man because he like touched your property it's- and then like the problem is is that then the next day west her brother has been arrested um because and by the he way, this was... all happens in 50 pages. If that. And like, I was like, oh, West is involved. Is he? Okay, cool. We've not actually heard about him in a while. So mm. uh, just drop him in. Because mm. because he also, he told West about it. He told her brother, broke her trust, told her brother. And then so then West kind of like, was like, oh yeah, f- him. Like blah, blah, blah. So then it's these two men. It's her brother and her boyfriend mm. secretly going around because West is going and like delivering the evict eviction notices mm. to him. So Wes gets arrested because they hear that they've been in a fight. But what's actually happened is the the old boss just like punched Wes and it was like self-defense. It's no no harm, no foul for Wes. You know, like Rosie doesn't need to be pissed off about that too much, thankfully, blah, blah, blah. But it's so stupid and it was so icky to be like, oh, so you're just with her brother just like doing this weird stuff behind her back. She doesn't want revenge. And actually the only reason you're taking revenge, mm. you're doing this is not for her, mm. is for you because you're like, she's mine. Mm. So you're keeping a massive secret from her. You've broken her trust yeah. by telling her like a deepest secret to her brother who she hasn't told because she didn't want to. Yeah. And you're just like throwing away money. Well buying these buildings that you never wanted will never do anything with and we'll just sell back on so that you can fuck with this guy even though she was like i don't want to do anything about it yeah and then the conclusion of all of this that she's like i'm gonna press charges on him and i was like that's the i mean i was like yeah you should but like not because you're like oh my boyfriend yeah my boyfriend showed me my billionaire boyfriend showed me that i can take revenge and i was like yeah well yeah he can take revenge because he's a billionaire he's a billionaire there's literally do anything he wants in the whole world when you are a billionaire there are no consequences famously, for your life famously but my point about the dress was oh, sorry, sorry I yeah. you went off. no it was me i completely went off a tangent is that when they so they have the fight back when they get to the hotel and it turns into a, that as we were saying earlier of like why would you do this oh, because you're because i love you mm. because you're worth every penny and he's like he undoes the button at the top of my back and the dress falls to the floor and i'm like what about the tight button sleeves? What about the sleeves? Mm. I'm like, you... I was just so like, LC. So one of my biggest things with this book, and clearly I believe it's, it's the same for you, mm. is that Ford is gross. Yeah. Um, It's like that on page one, no, sorry, page three, I take it back, guys. Mm. He's like... um. Talking about money makes me uncomfortable. I've had an abundance of it my entire life. Yeah. And I've now spent an awful lot of time around people who make my childhood look meager. I've never found it to be an especially impressive trait about any one person I've met. In fact, it's kind of the opposite. When you have a lot of money, people act differently around you. And if you let yourself get too obsessed with your own money, you can turn into a real piece of shit. Why would anyone want to read an article about how rich some guy is? I've also, I've never flourished in the spotlight. Yeah, I've got money, but I don't need to spend the money when I'm perfectly capable. When I've got the ambition and the dedication, it's like, he's not like other billionaires. (laughs) He's not like other billionaires. He's just not. And then when we're at the event, he's so like, that's probably my least favourite thing about these events. People are so fake. Like, all people want to do is talk about money and talk about business opportunities. Mm. Everyone's so fake, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Not like me. I'm real. I've been buying buildings. And it's like, oh my God, like... For a real reason though, because of love. Because of love. You're so wet. I think he's so wet. He's such a wet wipe. He's got huge, like, 
what was it? Small man syndrome, small dick syndrome, mm. big car syndrome. I don't know, whatever it is. Where like, I know, you know, that he's got a big penis, but he acts like he's got a tiny penis. And when she sees the price of the dress that he's bought her, she's like, this costs more than my like monthly salary or something, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, really? Wow. I should be paying you more. Remind me to do that when I get home. And I'm like, thank you for the money. But also like, no, no, like he's so like, I'm not like other billionaires, but you are because you have a private jet that you're flying, you know, and a yacht. 45 minutes and a yacht. So I, re- I was not a huge fan of him. And again, this is crazy for us because the way we've spoken about this and we're like three stars, 3.5 stars. Because I really liked Rosie. I really liked Cora. There were some really funny bits. L- Willa was there. Extra mm. point five of a star for me, at least. You know, like mm. there were, it was enjoyable and we have ripped into the smart. <laughs> but like there were bits I, I really, really enjoyed. <laughs> but I'm just finding it hard to remember them now. But I know I did. I think for me, I'm like, I agree with you completely about everything about him. And I think that just puts such a big damper on it. I I didn't really like her. She, I, I liked her and I liked her relationship with Cora for sure. But I, she just gave me the ick of it because mm. she was just a bit like, a bit too much of a girl boss for me. And like I said, all the stuff about her being like, where's my fucking <laughs> Just be like, let's just give it a rest. Mm. Let's just give it a rest. You say that one time. And then we're done with that because Mm. he has found the clip and then we're done with that. I did. I really liked all the stuff with Cora. We've like barely touched on it, but there's like just a really sweet bit where they have like have like a girl's night whilst he goes to his his bowling league with the single dads. And so they have like a girl's night and Cora all but says like, oh, I just don't think I'm pretty enough to wear like any colour apart from black. And Rosie goes on like a very girl boss speech but I was like yeah pop off like it was it was a nice Mm. like rousing thing to say to a 12 year old and then like before um when Ford comes back and he before he walks her back to her house she's like oh like one more thing and he like watches her go and she like has this pink velvet scrunchie that she wears all the time Rosie and she goes and like puts it on Cora's bedside table and then like the next morning Ford sees Cora come down and she's wearing it and she and she always wears the scrunchie from then on and I was like oh, that's really nice mm. I think just in general in summary like it just a lot of it didn't hit no um and there's bits there's bits that hit so I have hope I do I have, have hope. hope for the rest of the series I really do because I do think like a lot of this book is taken up with just the establishing mm. of, the, of the world but now the world has been established fingers crossed i have hope i'm definitely going to read the next one. Oh yeah of course um about wild eyes wild eyes are they all gonna be called wild something definitely wild love wild eyes come on watch it wild storm wild fire for bash oh my god wild fire, wild fire. that's really good um, um wild wild horses wild wild horses wild bowling wild <laughs> wild child no no. Uh, <laughs> no, that's a film. Uh, <laughs> wild Heart. Wild Heart. Well, it'll definitely be Wildfire. It has to be. I think you've called that completely. Um, what about the guy, the painter who I, he fights? Scotty. Scotty. He thinks this day he's a painter. Well, that's what I'm... Wild, wild art? art? No, Wild... Wild paint. My brain is like imagination. imagination. Wild contractor, wild single dad. <laughs> uh, it so writes itself. It writes do you have itself. any final thoughts? I'm disappointed, but I'm not giving up hope. If you've listened to this, but you've not read any of the Chestnut Springs, treat yourself. You guys. Do you know, actually, do you know what I think it is? Final thought. They're just not cowboys. I can't believe, yes, they're just not cowboys. And actually, I just think the cowboys, they were all really sexy. Yeah. And I was just like, they were all yeah. so fit and hot. And I was yeah. like, this is amazing. Yeah. And this guy, I was like, why do I give a f- about his weird app yeah. that he made? Do, I don't. <laughs> I, do you know what it is? I, Gramophone. I, I don't I don't care about, you know, you know your rip off Spotify. I'll tell you what I do care about. Uh, Theo Silva and Rhett East. Easton? Eaton. Eaton. Brett Eaton being on fucking bulls and getting thrown off them. And, being and you're like, in the, they're in the audience. And then they're like it's thrown just... against the fence and then like Summer's like, no! and then he gets up and he like puts his cowboy hat on her. Are you joking? The talk of all the chaps. <laughs> the thought that of these... is sexy. Being like, I'm a billionaire, I'm in a private jet, I'm wearing gold aviators. I was like, I'm 
Ick. gagging i'm gagging Ick. whereas with that i'm like imagine the thighs on theo silver he's rustic he's a bit dirty he's sweaty he's really <laughs> really jacked from like doing his job <gasps> he's not synthetically jacked from no, going to the gym he's no. jacked from doing his job he doesn't have job. time to go to the gym he doesn't he's, so he's riding busy. horses riding horses and riding, riding horses balls. oddly fit right 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 so that's what i mean is that like so Cade is kind of like uh ford in some ways i think and is like being annoying and being aggressive and whatever mm. but then Cade is running a farm well I and mean, Cade is like swagging around on his horse and he, they talk about like the look of his hips when he's like riding all of these horses yeah. and like training animals and like cantering through the fields and, like, and then like getting off the horse and then picking up his son and being a really good dad it's very different to being like i've got my gold aviators on <laughs> i'm getting off my private jets i'm killing the fucking planet i'm getting and onto my yacht i'm getting onto my yacht to go back to visit my daughter who um is who is born because of my sperm donation because uh my rich dad wouldn't give me a hundred pounds to buy rage <laughs> ticket do you know what i mean a hundred like, canadian it's different pounds. it is so different yeah, it of, is like you massively. have the aggressive vibe of someone like this and you're like you're just a privileged piece of shit yeah. actually whereas Cade, i'm like Kate's probably really annoying and really aggressive and irritable because he's tired. He's tired. He's been on the farm. He's a single dad. He's been a single dad for however long. He's on the farm. He's doing so much. And he's the only physical exertion. He's the only brother doing anything on the farm. I know. And then, but when his brother then needs him to step in and get in the bull ring with him, he does. And it's. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> She's gonna reread. Oh, I'm gonna reread Heartless, aren't I? That's I, what I mean. We thought Jasper was the least sexy one because he did ice hockey, not farm shit. <laughs> so true we're like yeah but in every other context i'm like ice hockey's so sexy yeah but i'm like an ice hockey and a ballerina no 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 give me a girl boss and a cowboy (laughs) that's the combination i want that is that see you later we only talk to me if you're a girl boss and cowboy (laughs) combo (laughs) i can allow a cowboy to call me a brat there's something hot about exactly like cowboy calling you a brat when he's been out doing hard work all day sexy right because you're like yeah fair you've been doing hard work all day a no, but billionaire we, calling me a brat we said the opposite of this in um fourth wing though is that we were like in this context it works because it's like i'm gonna be dead okay, okay, but okay. then we were like but if i'm on the farm stop telling me what to do yeah, no, but calling someone a brat is a bit different but i'm like okay so god tier like top tier of being allowed to, being told what to do uh by zayden reason yeah I, in high stakes fantasy setting. because i could die i will die i'm probably dead already yeah yeah I didn't make it across the parapet, famously. No, no, no. So no. God tier, Zayden Rearson, tell me what to do any day of the week in any situation. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. Then we move on to, to middle tier is cowboys. Yeah. You can tell me what to do if um if you're really tired from work <laughs> and feeling a bit or cranky. you've just done a really good bull ride. Yeah, yeah. You've just gotten off a horse. You've done like some sexy, you know, you look fit. On the Your horse. shirts maybe like a little bit ripped open. Yeah, a bit of chest hair, which I don't normally like, but on a cowboy hot, mm. you know, you put the hat on me and you call me a brat. Fine. You've bought me my own chaps. I'm here for it. We're all happy. You've bought me my own chaps. Do you know what I mean? They're white leather. Oh, slay. Yeah. <laughs> slay. <laughs> slay. <laughs> I would say in between that, ice hockey players, um, because it's fun. You know what? He's a professional sportsman. He's busy. And I'm not. No. And he, yeah, he's busy. He's doing physical exertion. <laughs> yeah. The physical exertion is a big part of it, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, and you know, he's like wearing all his pads and he like comes over to the plexiglass and yeah. I'm like, babe. And he's like, babe. Babe. And he's like annoyed because someone shoved him on the ice, you know? And he's rich, but he'll be like, I'm rich. Like, it's fine. Like, I'll buy you a watch, you know? Not, he won't give me a hundred thousand pounds, <laughs> but he will. Can <laughs> <do> pounds? <laughs> but he will buy me clothes in multiple sizes multiple different sizes that's less than cowboys definitely but i tell you what it's above nepo billionaires the, bi- <laughs> the nepo billionaires you can't even see it he's down here he's not even the, in the camera they're in the pits of hell you tell me what to do why what gives you the authority literally because your what? dad's rich and so therefore you could make a music app where do you put um just like the physicists telling you what to do i would say um below cowboys above ice hockeys I was going to say that because he's smart. He's smart. He knows things about like... Stop thinking of Adam Driver and the love hypothesis. But I'm again, I'm I like, am. you're smart. You're like... No, I'm just thinking of Adam Driver in real life. You're he's smart. creating like life, uh, you know, things that could potentially change the way that things go. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. So it's, you know, am I going to die soon? Reason? Cowboys. Because fit. Because fit. Strong, physical, ex- physical exertion. He's like, I've only ever known the land. Yeah. Science? Yeah. 
Ice hockey. <laughs> All sports? For me, it's ice hockey just because of the Ice slight hockey, more, basketball, baseball. It's kind of the, le- <laughs> it's the level of violence in ice hockey as well. Do you know what I mean? He's so like, I've just got the shit being out of me at yeah, my job. Yeah. Can so we can just... You, can we just not... If a baseball player says that to me, I'm like... Am I going to die or not fantasy setting? Cowboys? Scientists. Scientists. <laughs> Any sports, but baseball's at the bottom. And ice hockey's at the top. And ice hockey's at the top. And then... Billionaires. Billionaires. Yeah. Bill- <laughs> and then below billionaires, billionaires are wearing gold aviator sunglasses. <laughs> Ford, I'm so sorry, but I'm actually not sorry at all. The definitive list. That's a definitive list and we won't be accepting any kind of feedback or questions or queries on that. Not at this time. Tell you who we Why would says we've got to wrap up. Okay, no, but I tell you who we do, who we did miss. Who we did miss. Who's who's probably maybe at cowboy level or just below cowboys. Who? Sailors. It happened one summer. <gasps> that's, a, that's, because, a, that's above cowboys for me. That's above cowboys. Because it's dangerous. It is dangerous. Well, the cowboys is dangerous. The bull riding is dangerous. But it's extra dangerous because of my fear of the sea. Of course. Brennan in particular is at the same level of cowboys, but sailors in general uh, would be... But above sports. 100% above sports. It would be like Zayden, cowboys, sailors. Sports. No, scientists. (laughs) So confusing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be like, okay, Zayden... And then a quite bit down, cowboys, directly under sailors, tiny bit more uh, scientists, and then a chunk down. Sports. Sports. Ice, ice hockey, hockey at the top. top. I cannot I cannot express that enough. Ice hockey at the top of that list. Baseball. Basketball. <laughs> baseball. Baseball's quite low. Really quite low. And then. Billionaires. Billionaires. And then even further. Billionaires, billionaires in gold aviators. <laughs> smashed it smashed it smashed it that's the end of the podcast thanks for listening hope you had a good time uh, we certainly did yeah we did it's that's crazy. A, that's a two hours 42 minutes <laughs> oh bitch are you serious so guys the time of the youtube video i'm hoping will be about one minute one minute <laughs> one minute <laughs> one hour 30 so appreciate the editing that i've done over I, an hour I, taken I, out i do not cut out full conversations but we, ever we did a half an hour of bullshit at the beginning. That's um, true. But thank you so much for listening. Follow us on Instagram. Who knows what the handle is currently. <laughs> uh, Subscribe on YouTube. HBC Podcast. Yeah. Follow us on your favourites podcast platform. Rate us five stars. Email us hornybookclub at gmail.com. Give us money on Kofi if you want. Thanks for watching on YouTube Re- if you are. Oh yeah, thank you so much. Like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Woohoo! Turn the bell on so you're notified when we upload. We'll do a post on Instagram as well when this one comes out of the upcoming books we're going to do. We're also going to do an episode on Funny Story by Emily Henry. Oh yeah! That so one will be that. out soon. So read that because that was great. We've already and read Iron it. And Iron Flame. Guys, Iron Flame. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon. Right, we've got to go. We've got to go. We must go. Simply must. Um, Love you so much. That was a great one. That was a great one. Bye-bye. Bye.